Good morning. Welcome to worship service. I have a few announcements. Uh, first one is, could you please pass the pew pads so we kind of get an idea of who's made it this week? We'd appreciate it. Next announcement. Um, you'll see printed in here that the, the potluck family ties is at the end of November. It has been adjusted. It will be the 2nd of December. It is labeled family ties to celebrate the family we have here at Beaver Valley. The one thing the council asked me to say this to, to you this morning, if you cannot bring something to the potluck, that's fine. Please bring yourself because it's about family. It's not about having to bring something, it's about being there. And we know how busy parents and, and people can be, so please come if you can. Uh, the next announcement is we're looking for uh, members to be on the audit team. Now the audit team is, is anybody that's a member of the congregation that can come in at the end of the year, uh, go over our books, a disinterested party, and, uh, and just make sure we're on the, on the, the straight and narrow with it. Uh, the treasurer, Stacy, will uh, sit with you who's ever on this team, we're looking for two to three people. It uh, should take an afternoon, should be no real big deal, but we're sure looking for people. So if you can do this, please talk to anybody on the council, talk to myself, and we'll, uh, we'll get that process going. Time and talent sheets. Your time is a gift. That's why it's in a gift box. Anytime you can, Please put your time and talent sheets in the box, whether it be during offering, before church, or after church. We sure appreciate you uh, letting us know what your talents are and letting us know what time you have. We thank you very much for that. It's Veterans Day today. We'd like to thank all the veterans, and we appreciate your service, and uh, thank you very much on this 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. So uh, thanks for your service, thanks for your time and your talents. Today we have Pastor Ray Heidenson, and we welcome him and we appreciate him coming to join us today and leading us in worship. Is there any other announcements I've missed? Yes. Welcome meeting after church today. Yep, a reminder in the, in the choir room, All right? Thank you very much, anything else? With that, could you please share the peace? Thank you. Uh, good to be with all of you. Uh, I have been here a few times before. Many of you uh, know who I am, which is unfortunate because that means I got to behave myself out there. Uh, but anyway, no, it's good to see all of you, and, and I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here again. So, call to worship. We come joyfully to the house of the Lord. This is our gift and our sacrifice, an act of devotion to God. We sing our opening hymn.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, increase in us your gift of faith that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson is from 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 through 16. The word of the Lord to Elijah. The word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Now go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. And as she was, go as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar, a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he, as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The second lesson is from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24 through 28. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on your behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world, but as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive their greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. 
For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. I got candy. <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> okay. You guys are full of smiles today. You know that? It's nice to see. I don't know if it's because you're up listening to me or because of candy. I bet it's the candy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Not really. Well, today... The last three or four weeks, we're talking about time, talent, and treasures in the church for our church family. Time is the time you can give to our church, and we'll talk about talent today, and treasures, which we'll talk about next Sunday, is kind of about the money that keeps the church going. But we're going to talk about talent today. Well, I looked up in the dictionary. We got an old world book dictionary that was made in 1968, so I looked that up. And it says in there that talent is the ability to do something good. So have any of you guys got talent? Do you? What kind of talent do you have? Sharing. Wow, that's neat. Anybody else have some talent? Yep. Helping people. What kind of talent have you got? Sharing. How about you? How about you? Um, being kind to others. Be kind to others. You took my sermon right away from me. Because I was going to say, ta a talent, I was at a service this last week, and the minister said, a special talent is just to be nice. So as kids, we can just be nice to people, can't we? And as we grow up, then we can use our talents in the church. We have organists and piano players and singers and people that take care of the outside prop property. They all have special talents. We don't have all the same kind of talents, though, do we? No, we got all different talents, and that's good, because we can all help each other in a little bit different way. Yes? And God keeps us safe. He does. You guys are really smart today. Well, should we have a little prayer? Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing all these kids up, and I should say a lot of smart kids, for bringing them up to share their talents with us. Amen. Yeah, I don't have candy. <laughs> Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, first of all, am I okay down here or would you rather I go up there? I'm okay here? Good. Thank you. Um, I met with Greg uh, earlier this week to kind of go over the service and stuff. And, 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 I, and I said, Greg, um, I'm going to throw you under the bus on Sunday. <laughs> and he said, fine, do it. <laughs> See, when you're a retired pastor and you're asked to supply, what, what, what we tell the person calling us is, let me check my calendar and I'll get back to you. What that means is I'm going to go to my file of old sermons and see if I've got one that's not terrible. <laughs> and then when I find out I do have one that's not too bad, I call back and say, you know what, I'm free that day. I can do that. <laughs> so that's what I told Greg. 
And about a month later, he calls and says, Ray, you're going to be preaching in the middle of our stewardship program. This is what I want you to do. <laughs> really, Greg, I've got to write a whole new sermon. Anyway, Greg, that was for you. You're under the bus. No, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm very excited to be here. I've been here a few times before, so again. Um, so the other thing is, Greg says, well, you know what? You know, you have driven by this congregation, I don't know how many times, for like 21 years. Because I served First Lutheran Church in Valley Springs and Palisade Lutheran for years. Live in Brandon. So yeah, I know this road really well. He says, well, what talents, what gifts do you see this congregation having haven't driven by here so many times. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you have a nice building. <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful old building. It's well kept up. All right, yeah, you got that. But see, the, the thing is, is that you don't really know the gifts and talents that a congregation has until you get inside the doors and you actually visit the congregation and you spend a little time in the congregation and, and hopefully what you find is that especially when you first get there that it's a warm welcoming inviting congregation because that's a gift that congregations can have that's a talent that congregations can have. And you need to understand that not every congregation has that. I'm sure that if you were to go and ask any member of any congregation, are you a warm, welcoming congregation? They would say, well, yes, we are. But no, you're not always. For example, when, when, my, when my youngest son was still playing Legion baseball for Valley Springs, we went to a tournament out of town. And because I was always telling my congregations that just because you're on vacation doesn't mean you don't have to go to church. Well, I figure I better go to church. <laughs> so I got up on Sunday morning and I went to this church, Lutheran congregation, pretty good size. And... I walked in, and nobody said anything to me. And I went through the entire service, and nobody said anything to me. And I walked out, and nobody said anything to me. And they had to know I was a visitor because I was the only one wearing shorts. <laughs> but I'll guarantee you, if I were to ask any member of that congregation, are you a warm and welcoming congregation? They would have said, of course we are. And I would have said, no, you're not. Okay? So maybe your talent or your gift as an individual is someone who can greet people as they're coming into church and welcome them and make them feel at home. But I also understand that not everybody possesses that particular gift. I mean, I, I, someone from one of my former congregations, they came up to me one time and, 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 and said, Pastor, I am so glad that we have people that welcome other people to church because that's just not me. To go up to somebody that I don't know and I've never met before, that's really hard. And so I'm glad we have people to do that. Of course, the next thing is, okay, maybe that's not your talent. Maybe that's not your gift. But what is your talent? What is your gift? Because we've all got them. We don't always have the same ones, just like Bob was talking about up here. But we've all got talents. We've all got gifts. Maybe you're, again, what, maybe it's music, all right? Maybe you can play an instrument. Maybe you can sing. Maybe you can direct the kids. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe that's part of who you are. And so you can do some Sunday school things. Or maybe you like kids, so you can be part of the youth program. There's, you've got your list, okay? 
There's a lot of different things that are involved. There's, there's a lot of gifts that need uh, to, be, to be a part of, of the congregation. And it takes a lot of people with a lot of gifts and talents to be able to make a congregation vibrant and vital and dynamic. Uh, okay, it's okay. It's, it's football season. Let's 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 use the football example. Okay. If I'm six foot five and weigh three hundred and thirty-five pounds, I'm not going to be a very good wide receiver. And oh, by the way, congratulations, Brandon Valley. How about that? <laughs> I actually went to bed before the game was over, but I couldn't sleep, so I said I got to get back up again. So. I got up and watched the end of it. So anyway, uh, yeah, if I'm 6'5", 335, whatever it is, I'm not going to be. But you know what? If I can't catch the ball, maybe I can protect the guy that's throwing it. <laughs> okay? I don't know that there's any sport around that, 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 that needs more diversified talent than a football team. That all works together like the football team does. You know, if you're playing basketball, you, I mean, I, I watched the, the whole Michael Jordan thing way back in the day, okay? He could take over a game all by himself. He, football, you can't do that. It takes all 11 guys on the same play all the time. It, 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 that, that's the way it's got to work. You know, music is the same way. Um, and this is where I'm going to enlist Ruth's help here. Um, Ruth, play a, a note for me. Okay, nice, clean, pure, crisp. Now play a chord for me. A little richer, a little more tone, a little more variety, and it all works together, and it sounds really good, all right? See, and, and when I go to... Uh, I, I love listening to solos. I'd still rather listen to a choir or a chorus. When I go to the symphony, I appreciate a good violin, but I really appreciate hearing an entire orchestra. That's well, the same way in a congregation. A lot of different gifts, a lot of different talents coming together for one purpose. It's to make you a vital, vibrant, and dynamic congregation. And all of those talents and gifts are important and need to be a part of the congregation. Now, I understand that Greg is a very gifted pastor. Don't you dare tell him I said that. <laughs> I get that Greg is a gifted pastor, but Greg can't do it all by himself. Okay? He just can't. He needs you. You need each other in order to make it work. Because this is not Greg's congregation. This is your congregation. Okay? How many of you were here before Greg got here? Hands. Let me see them. Okay. And before Greg, I think it was Jerry. How many were you here? And before Jerry, it was Julie. All right, there's getting to be a few fewer each time. <laughs> How many of you plan on being here after Greg leaves? And I've not heard anything, so don't. <laughs> All right? I may tell him how great retirement is, but I'm not pushing him. All right? Y'all plan on being here after he leaves. What does that tell you about whose congregation this is? And this is yours. And your congregation needs your gifts, your talents, your abilities to be able to make it everything that it needs to be. It's been said that our talents and our gifts, our abilities, are God's gift to us. It's also true then that what we do with 
those gifts and those talents, especially as it pertains to the family of faith, is our gift back to God, our way of saying thank you for all you've done for us. Your clock's not working, so I'm not sure how much time. <laughs> um, it's, it's 10. Okay. You know what it means when a pastor looks at their watch? Nothing. <laughs> Except right now it means I'm done, so we're going to sing our hymn of the day. For those of you who are able, I would invite you to please rise as we together confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we'll receive our morning offering. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Again, would you please rise. Gracious and loving God, we are very appreciative of the many gifts, the many talents with which you have blessed this congregation. Our prayer now is that so many would then commit to using uh, these gifts, these talents to the building up of this congregation and to the reaching out uh, into the community. And so we pray your blessing uh, upon the talents and the use of those talents here. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, on this Veterans Day, we are forever grateful to those men and women who have served this country regardless of branch of service uh, we are great for those grateful for those who uh, have passed away we are grateful for those who have served and yet still live and especially grateful too for those who continue uh, to serve again regardless of branch of service watch over guard and protect them as well as their families Lord in your mercy Heavenly Father, we pray for victims of the wildfires in California, which have claimed so many lives already. Uh, we pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones, that you would strengthen and encourage them uh, in the days, weeks, and even years to come. We pray for those who have lost homes, who have lost businesses, 
um, that they would be able to rebuild and restore and start over again, give to them strength and courage. And we pray for those who are fighting those fires, that they would be courageous and that you would keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray for those listed in the bulletin, those in need of prayer. We pray for the family of David Granberg. We pray for Beulah, for Jeffrey, Janet, Jordan, Bob, Jim, Linda, Cheryl, Violet, Deanna, Sheila, and Kevin. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else it is you see that we need, we pray that you grant through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. How many of you are... So how many of you are wondering what our closing hymn is? <laughs> it's hymn 774. What a fellowship. Hymn 774 will be our closing hymn. Go in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs>